So this is part three of the RA engine rebuild. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram at saving underscore salvage. And also parts one and two, or I'll put part one up the top there if you haven't already seen that. And part two, obviously you can find the links to that anyway. So yeah, we're gonna just jump straight into it. And again, I'll start with things that are obvious, like the drive shafts. Uh, inlet manifold looks like that needs to come off because it just looks like it's going to be in the way. Uh, and yeah, and it's just going to be a process of moving things out of the way. So like this oil pipe will probably need to be removed because engine will fit past that. Just obvious stuff. Uh, ECUs will need to come out. Wiring from the sides need to come out and like bundle into the middle. And basically, it's just disconnecting pipe work, um, fuel lines, uh, battery leads, chassis leads, like all this like clutch line down here as well. So all just little bits of that, like that, which are gonna be time consuming. Um, so yeah, kind of get into the nitty gritty part now. And we're gonna start things off with the drive shafts. This is quite easy to get to, as you can see, only the six bolts on the inside there and the one big nut on the outside. And once you've cracked all those off, the drive shafts actually quite easily comes out the top as you're about to see. There we go, we can just pull it out the top there and it's the exact same for the other side. So it's literally five minutes to take both drive shafts out. And then I'm going to tackle into the ECUs, trying to get the bolts undone to get the ECUs um, out. And there's a couple of wires I'm unsure of, so I'm just going to remove this wheel arch liner here just so I can have a better look and see where they go. So that's the drive shafts removed from both sides. I've just worked my way up to the top of the engine now and just starting to look at the wiring and detaching things from either side to bring them into the middle so we can take it out with the engine. And as you can see, I've detached my ECUs from both sides, just a couple of little brackets, a couple of bolts on each one they just pull out. However, I'm, a, I'm having a bit of an issue with these two wires here. Um, so they're part of my, wire, uh, my main loom here, look, and they go, I mean, you can't even see where they go, but they go right down the back or right down the side there, and they go into the chassis rail by the looks of it. So I'm not too sure what I'm supposed to do at this point because I can't find where they go Actually, I wonder if they're just bolted. I wonder if they're just earths. They might just be earths. Um, okay, give me two minutes. Okay, yeah, so I, I literally took up uh, this wheel arch liner here and I was spending about 20 minutes trying to find out where the wires trace to. And it turns out, yeah, they are just earths. And the reason I can't see where they lead to is they, they're just bolted to the chassis the other side of that. I mean, why they couldn't have just bolted on this side of the chassis so I could undo them a lot easier, I don't know. So now I'm gonna have to try and get some sort of socket and spanner in there right down the back there to try and undo uh, the earth point. It's the same this side as well. I've just had a look, uh, you can't see it, but there's, a, there's only one wire this side, but it's the same deal. Right, finally got there, managed to get them off and that side as well. Uh, so now I'm just gonna disconnect the ECUs. They do look identical, so I'm just gonna put a left and a right marker on them as well, so I don't get them mixed up, putting them back together. Uh, but with ECUs with Audi and probably most brands as well, you get security screws. Now these are basically little screws that had little socket ends attached, and basically when you do them up, it snapped the socket end off, so it just left you a bolt that you can't basically undo. Uh, that's just called security screws, so no one can tamper with the ECU. So what we need to do is just grind a little slot in the top of them just so we can undo them with a flat bladed screwdriver. Do that for both of them, just get the ECUs out of the way so they don't get damaged, um, well, in this whole engine removal process. Uh, so we're gonna do that and then I think might start draining some fluids because we've got a gearbox, is that a gearbox oil cooler line? So there's be fluid coming out there. We've got clutch lines as well. Uh, and we've also got coolant as well, which um, I, I'm, I'm assuming the radio is in the front of the car, not 100%, so we need to see about draining all the coolant as well. So what you're seeing me do here is actually cut with the, my die grinder into the left-hand ECU, but as you can see, I am very much struggling to get them undone. They are completely corroded in and stuck. So removing the ECU brackets didn't quite go to plan. I ended up having to cut the near side one off. Um, the near side one was covered in rust and corrosion, so just no doubt it's just been weathered a lot more. And the bolts just will not come undone at all, so you can see where I've just cut the brackets off to move move them out of the way each side so I can undo my plugs because them screws were just not coming off. However, the right hand side, absolutely fine. They all undid uh, nice and easily. Now I'm gonna move on to something I don't normally do. I normally get carried away at this point. I'm gonna start draining some fluids. So we have uh, power steering here. So I'm just gonna drain the fluid out of both those hoses. Um, hopefully that'll drain all the system because it's the lowest point. We've got clutch here as well. So we'll get rid of that. And we've also got uh, coolant here. 
So whether this is the thermostat or pump, I'm not sure, but we do have a little bung on the end, which looks very much like a draining bung, pretty much the lowest point in the system. So that should be able to drain all the coolant from there as well. So we're gonna do all that, and then we'll just probably do a bit more stuff underneath, like remove the uh, prop shaft. Um, there's some gear linkage cables, cable ties and stuff. So we'll just do what we can underneath um, and just start, just keep going basically. I mean, what a mess. What a stupid design that is. Look at that. Could they have not a thought of a better design than just letting it hit the chassis and go bloody everywhere? Luckily for me, all the other fluid came out fine. Power steering fluid came out fine at the bottom there. Gearbox as well came out there, no problems. And also there's a top line as well, which I didn't show, which I've also removed. And I'm just removing the gear linkage cables here as well, and then just tucking them underneath the chassis and also getting the clutch pipe out the way as well, which is just one bolt underneath. Well, that seems to be most things done at the top that I can see at the moment. We do have to move this uh, oil cooler pipe out the way. Um, which I will do once it's underneath because I need to remove that completely because yeah That's just completely in the way, but everything like gearbox lines. I can just move them to the side uh, Clutch lines again. Uh, that's at the bottom. So it doesn't matter. They can just hang um, I've removed the power steering uh, Reservoir and the one pipe that was going to be in the way uh, The other line for it. I've just tucked behind the chassis there um, What else have we got? The other power steering line I've just tucked up behind the bonnet strut or the rear boot strut. Fuel line disconnected here. Uh, the wiring is enough across from the left hand side. So there's not much other cooler, oh, cooler reservoir pipe that's not in the way. Um, yeah, there's not much this side. It's, this side is all done pretty much as well. Just gear linkage cables I've just put down there. So I'm just gonna put it up in the air and just double check everything underneath. Uh, we've got a few lines here, which is literally just a, what's a um, PCV valve, breather valve. Uh, we'll get rid of that. Um, probably move the header tank. And then we've just got the big wiring loom. And as you can see, look where it goes into the car here in the bulkhead. That big electrical line all there that goes into the front of the car. So that will be our next step. So I'm gonna put it up in the air, just double check everything underneath, and then we'll get it on the ground, put the wheels back on it because to get in the driver's uh, side, I'm gonna have to roll it back because there's no room with it on the ramp like that. Oh, and quickly, I forgot, I actually never showed you the oil leak. Now, I haven't actually located it fully, but it is clearly coming from the oil cooler, which is sat around here. Now, this pipe here looks very corroded and rusty. So, I don't know if you can just see like a little split in the bottom there. So, I'm wondering if that is where the oil leak was. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna look too much into it until the obviously engine's out and we, we know what we're doing with that. But just thought I'd show you where I think the oil leak's coming from. So now we move on to the drive shaft and because that's right at the bottom of the engine, it's actually quite easy access. So I'm having no real issues getting the drive shaft undone. However, there's not quite enough room to pull it away. So I'm just gonna have to leave it sat there. And then when the engine comes out, I can just pull it away from the chassis. And then just a few coolant pipes as well. And as you can see, it's just some coolant leaking out. There's gonna be residue in all parts of the system with the coolant, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. And I'm just going around checking all the other lines, just making sure I've got everything undone that I can possibly see from underneath. And now this was the tricky bit. There's an oil cooler pipe that I need to remove that was above the exhaust manifold and there's a bolt on the top of it. I'm about to explain, but I wasted a good 45 minutes trying to undo this bolt and for no good reason whatsoever. Right, I've just spent the best part of half an hour, possibly more, removing this oil pipe, the oil pipe that went over the top of the gearbox that needed to be removed. Um, and it turns out, so this thread here isn't actually a bolt as it suggested. That is actually a fixed thread with just a nut on the bottom. That's all that holds it in. But, let me just put this down. It's exactly the same as that pipe there, which you can clearly see has a head on it and it's got a six mil Allen key uh, shaped insert. So, Anyone in the world would assume that that is a six mil Allen key bolt that's holding it in with just a nut on the end. So I spent half an hour, well, 40 odd minutes trying to undo that and it turns out that that is actually part of the pipe and it's just a nut on the bottom that holds it in. So why Audi have decided to make it look like a bolt when it's not is beyond me because, yeah, I could have saved myself a lot of time. I mean, luckily, I have no idea, but I've obviously ground off 
the head because I just could not undo it at all. Turns out it's because it's fixed. Um, but I haven't actually damaged it, which is an absolute miracle. But why make it appear like a bolt if it's not? So unnecessary. And now we're gonna move on to the interesting part and start stripping the interior loom from the inside and pushing it through the bulkhead. And to do this, we need to put the wheels back on, get it on the ground and get it off the ramp because with the access on the ramp, I just cannot open the door enough. So we need to get it on, roll it back. And now we need to remove the driver's seat as well so we get even more access to that rear bench. Also need to push the passenger seat forward a little bit as well. And believe it or not, this rear bench here isn't actually held on with any screws. It's just clips that hold it in. So once you've pulled off the speaker surrounds and the surround for the MMI, you can just pull the whole thing out and it exposes it like that and as you can see that where I'm working there once I remove the speaker trims as well and the seatbelt anchor and um, that gives me full access to the loom and there's quite a lot going on to be fair there's a, it's a couple of fuse boxes fuse ra uh, rails on the right hand side there's about seven or eight relays and a couple more bits of wiring as well Right, so I'm just about there, about to pull the wiring loom through the bulkhead into the engine bay. I've got all my connectors disconnected. I'm hoping all these will fit through like that. There's a lot of wires. There are two things that I have found, and that is this wire here, this little orange wire, and then there's a uh, red wire here, which are built into the loom. Now, at first I didn't know what they were, but now upon reflection, I'm pretty certain they are to do with the ghost immobiliser. And because they've been... Uh, like soldered into the loom I am just going to cut them there and then obviously rejoin them uh, both when I fit it all back together so once them two are snipped and in there as well and now that should be all there we go look all completely free and I'm now just going to feed it through and then we should be ready to take the engine out I thought it was about time I removed the rear boot lid. That boot lid I've been saying I was gonna remove for absolutely ages, and now it's just completely got in the way with the wiring loom. So yeah, off it goes. Right, so boot lid now all removed. I've removed the header tank as well, just for a little bit more access. And I've just had the car up in the air, going over the last few bits, trying to make sure I don't forget anything. Trying to get this out without forgetting anything. It's gonna be very difficult to do, um, but I have found my starter motor cable here which obviously goes straight to the battery, doesn't go through the bulkhead, so that actually goes into the wheel arch and down the side of the car. No way I'm disconnecting that from that end, so we need to disconnect it from the starter. Um, so it's literally just one bolt here. I think there's another wire that comes off it somewhere. I'm not sure yet, so I just need to trace that back and basically feed it out and then down outside the car so it's not in the way. And then I think we're pretty much there. I've, I've, as I said, I've just gone over it. I can't see anything else stopping me um obviously once we start lifting it in the air uh, probably a few cables or pipes may show themselves but we'll get to that in a moment so i've pulled the starter cable off from the top of the gearbox and fed it down to here which was really easy now it actually goes up behind the subframe here and up behind uh the what's that the alternator here and then loops back round and there's a joint like this right behind the alternator and I cannot get to it to unbolt it because it's bolted to the part of the engine that we're taking out. So I think I'm going to remove the alternator because it actually looks really easy to remove, look. Um, so if I would just remove that, get it out of the way, then I can get access to that bolt and then just get rid of this cable so we can then hopefully just pull the whole thing out. So yeah, I'm going to give that a go. It should be fine. And there we go, a couple of minutes, removed the uh, alternator, which was actually coolant fed as well. So there's a couple of pipes to remove. And there is my bracket here that was holding the loom on and the bolt snapped off as well. So got to sort that out when it all comes out. But I think now we are clear. I've just hung the wire down and tucked it under the bottom arm there. Um, there's the, so they had an alternator wire and the starter wire. So they're all out of the way. Uh, I can't find anything else attached at the moment so i've undone the obvious bolts that i can see for the engine mounts which was two here and two on the other side as well they look a bit small to be the only bolts i need to undo so i'm not sure if there's any others hidden up the top maybe that i can't see but we'll try and get it out um there are obviously gearbox bolts here but we'll bring the down uh, bring the car down now and yeah hook up the engine crane undo them bolts and fingers crossed you'll lift it out
Well, I'm connected all up. I think I'm good to go. I've got my three uh, mountain points on the engine side. I haven't put the gearbox side on yet because I just want to make sure it does actually lift up and I haven't missed anything off. Once we've lifted off at the front end, we'll start, I'll put something under the gearbox to lift that up as well. So fingers crossed, she comes out. It's moving. I feel like there's some, uh, something grabbing on the near side. It's come off this side, but it doesn't feel like it has the other side, although I've undone the same amount of bolts. Just interesting. And there we go, engine is all out. And if I'm honest, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I mean, I was helped by the fact that I could obviously strip the rear end, so I had a lot of access over the front here. And things like the steering rack weren't in the way, pretty much it, but like it just a little bit less to do on the rear end, in my opinion, in the R8. It just felt like there was just that little bit more room overall. But yeah, engine's out. I did have a little bit of a problem with, uh, it was this AC hose. Um, it was completely hidden and I couldn't see it under the, I mean, it looks massive there, but it was hidden and I couldn't see it. So I managed to undo it and that was our problem. And also of the hoses I connected for the coolant down there, they just got a bit jumbled up and got stuck over here. A couple of hoses got stuck over there. So I had a few issues with the entanglement there, but other than that, it actually came out all right. So I know, I really want to know as well, this head here, I mean, you can't, Where's the torch? But is it going to be timing chain failure? I'm not sure. So if it's going to be quite easy, I might just pull this wiring out to the side here and see if we can just whip off the timing chain cover and have a quick look. Now, this is where it can get confusing because there's a lot of wiring, a lot of orientation, and it's trying to remember where things go in the correct order. And yeah, it can be a pain. But now I'm just trying to undo the spark plug wiring from the right hand bank just so we can see if we can get this timing chain cover off. Um, and I've managed to get all the bolts undone bar one. And yeah, it's just proven a bit too difficult to get to that last one. Uh, I tried to get to the timing chain cover. I managed to get most of it off, but there was just one bolt there that I can't get off, which means I can't get this massive pipe off here, which is also fixed under the inlet manifold and the other head as well. So I'd have to remove that pipe before I can get the uh, chain cover off. And that's gonna be like another hour's worth of work. And I don't have an hour's worth of time. So I'm going to leave it there for today's video, guys. It's now the weekend for me now anyway, so I don't really want to start taking bits off and then not remembering. I'd rather just get back Monday morning and, uh, yeah, start doing it all and know where I'm at. So, yeah, engine's out. Did all right. So in the next video, guys, the engine strip down will begin. We'll find out exactly what is wrong with this engine, whether it can be saved or not, and what we're going to do from there. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Follow me on Instagram as well at saving underscore salvage and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, guys.